All right, good teams find a way to win, but the Angels just find a way to kind of hang around and then find a way to lose, right? They did do some good things on Tuesday night against the Orioles, even though they lost. So we're going to highlight that. It's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcast, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SiriusXM by searching Locked On Angels. And the best way to help us out is by giving us a rate and a review. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure that you're subscribed and click that bell to be notified every time a new episode drops. And today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. You can make every moment more. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Thanks for being here for this episode of Lockdown Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the Frisch Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Speaking of Super Halo Bros, Mike, have you seen the new Super Mario game that's coming out? Oh my out? gosh. That <laughs> that I want to play it so bad. <laughs> there's Drill Mario, there's Bubble Mario, you can be an elephant. See what we do when the Angels suck? We have to go do other things. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Hey, friends, it's our second season here at Locked On Angels, and uh, it's not Locked On Mario, for. Uh, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> at this time of year. Uh, Lockdown Everydayers, join us every day this week. Of course, we have Fan Mail Friday coming up, so get your questions in for that. like to have those in by Thursday or so, so that they're in for plenty of time for us to record. On today's show, are the Halos an attractive destination? Do free agents want to even be here? What do the Halos have in terms of sway? And then what do we make of this season that Luis Renjifo has put together? We've got the numbers and dove into the stats. And you might be surprised, but Mike, let's talk about that extra inning loss to the Orioles last night. Yeah, it was a 5-4 to four loss. Now, we'll get into the details of the game. But for the second night in a row, Johnny, the Halos had a quality start mm-hmm. from a starting pitcher, which is a good sign. I know it's at the end of the year. We saw this with the Angels last year. But Reed Detmers needs every bit of good that he can get. We saw Kenny Rosenberg pitch really well in game one. He actually pitched really well against these Orioles in game two. That is Reed Detmers, six and two thirds. He did give up nine hits, but he worked around that. And Johnny, Mm -hmm. the reason why he worked around that is because he only walked one batter. Walks always come back and haunt Reed Detmers. And, and the Orioles are gonna to, the Orioles are gonna hit people like that. Right. They're gonna get hit. Yeah. So if you add if you add on walks, I mean there's there's add on runs, right? Mm-hmm. So Reed had five Ks, he had 98 pitches in this game. It was interesting, Johnny, that he threw more change-ups in this game and less sliders. Normally he's 34% sliders and three percent change-ups, but last night. 9% sliders and 22% changeup. So mm-hmm. interesting and sounds like maybe he did some work and did some research and maybe worked with, dare I say, Matt Wise this last week to try to figure out how to actually pitch against the Orioles. And he looked he looked really good, Johnny, and he deserved to win. The Angels yeah. offense just couldn't do anything until the seventh inning and your boy, Brandon Drury came through. Why don't you talk about that? Yeah, he got the Halos on the board in the seventh, an RBI double. And guess who was on base, Mike? Nolan Shanuel, who hit two hits, had a walk and a run scored. And Mike Moustakis, that guy is just has just been a godsend this season. (laughs) He ties up the game in the seventh. Somebody asked why on Twitter, they asked why they thought we thought they didn't release or put Moustakis on the waiver wire. I said, because he's a guy you want around in the clubhouse. And I think we see him next year. I think in some capacity, oh, I think he's I think he's on this team next year and I know it's a risk. He's getting older, but I think if w- what we got this year from Moose is something he can replicate next year, I think it adds to this young team, this young core. Yeah. And I think he actually could be a really good bat in this lineup with everybody healthy. I hate saying that because we say that every year, but with yeah. everybody healthy, I think Moose would be a great bat either starting or coming off the bench, right? With everybody saying, L-A-N-A. <laughs> yeah, with everybody healthy. Yeah. yeah. That's uh, the pipe dream right there. Right. At, uh, bottom of the eighth, Trey Cabbage came through with an RBI single after Eduardo Escobar hit a triple off yeah. Jacob Webb. That was hilarious to watch Escobar, but you just felt like he was thinking three all the way, man. He right. looked out there and he saw it and he saw his opportunity slid short of the bag and yes. had to swim move to get to there and, and yeah. was safe. And that's when Trey cabbage 
was able to drive him in. That was pretty cool. And good on Trey Cabbage, man. I want to see him be successful in the major yeah. leagues. He's really been able to do well in the minor leagues and AAA. I'd love to see that translate to the major leagues. And when he hit his first home run, it was a bomb. And then he hit he, just a, a clutch hit from him was so good to see because mm -hmm. I think that he's a talented hitter and it, he just might need to get really comfortable in the majors. So let's give him some at bats so that he can. Suddenly we have a bunch of lefties on this team between Escobar and Renjifo switch hitting. And then you've yeah. got Matt Theis and, and Nolan Shanuel and, and Otani when he's back and Trey Cap like where'd all these lefties come from? Right. Unfortunately, Mike Carlos Estevez blew, <laughs> blew the save against the yeah. third one. It was uh, going to be save 30 out of 32 tries. It did not happen. Yeah. And, and, and that's the thing. Like, I know it's only three blown saves. And when you look at baseball reference in 10 years, you're going to go, wow, he actually had a really good year. But those three saves came, I would say two of them really came like in heartbreaking moments. And yeah. then even in ga a game like this, where you're playing the Orioles, and I know that these, these games, like we're out of it. Right. But to be able to get a victory after getting swept by the A's and then Get, losing the first game to the Orioles, like it would have been a really good moment for the Angels. But I think SD just is getting figured out by really good teams. They mm -hmm. know what he's throwing and he's going to be at the top of the zone and they're ready for it, right? It looked yeah. like they were really ready for it last night. I mean, it took half a season for him to get figured out. The Mariners figured him out. The The Giants did the same thing. And now you have the Orioles, obviously the best, one of the best teams in baseball, and they're going to figure out, figure you out as well now the problem is that the halos came right back in the yeah. bottom of the ninth moniac yeah. singled in renjifo after he had a uh, a double in the inning that tied the game grichuk of course swung and popped up at something way off the plate yeah we're gonna talk about why swinging in the zone is important when we talk about renjifo later on and then of course three <laughs> this drove me nuts and it drove wayne rondazzo on the broadcast nuts too he said well the orioles didn't do anything in the in the top of the 10th, all they had was three ground outs and that scored the Manfred ghost runner. And so right. that's, that's how they won the game. But if it's that simple to win the game that way, the angels should be able to tie the game right that way. So I understand the frustration. I'm frustrated. I hate Rob Manfred's ghost tour. Um, that's what I'm going to call it from now on. Cause it's ridiculous. I hate extra innings. They're not fun anymore because I think they said on the broadcast, like 53% of the visiting team, Teams are winning games in extra innings because they set the tone at the top yeah. of the inning. Did you say ghost tour or did you say something else? I said ghost tour. Okay. I didn't hear that. I heard uh, a, a word that sounds like tour, but starts with a WH. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, I did not hear that. I was like, John, it's a, it's a G rated show. It's a family uh, <laughs> show. Thanks for pointing it out, Mike. Oh, good grief. Well, on Sorry, that note. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> Pastor Mike. No, uh, the Angels are playing the O's again tonight, 638 Pacific time. You can catch every pitch at the Angels hometown broadcast on Sirius XM with the SXM app. All you got to do is search Angels. Coming up on Lockdown Angels, are the Halos an attractive destination for free agents? Well, we're going to have that discussion coming right up. Today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn Sales. If you're struggling to close deals and know that like cold outreach is hard and it feels like you're wasting time of both the buyer and the seller at every stage, then your organization needs some help and they can overcome these challenges with technology that translates comprehensive, high quality buyer data into real time insights. These deeper insights empower sales reps and teams to adopt the habits of top performers, which lead to better outcomes. They call this at LinkedIn, they call this Deep Sales and LinkedIn has built the first deep sales platform with the next generation of LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Right now, you can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator and get a 60-day free trial at linkedin.com slash locked on. That's linkedin.com slash locked on for a 60-day free trial. Let LinkedIn Sales Navigator help you sell like the superstar that you are. Just go to linkedin.com slash locked on today to get started. Thanks for making Lockdown Angels your first listen of the day. Hey, Lockdown Everydayers, we're here watching the games, just in case you don't want to or so that you don't have to. And You're welcome. If you are curious, you can tune in to the Angels Hometown Broadcast at 6.38 Pacific Time. It's Angels Orioles one more time. You can catch every pitch of the Hometown Broadcast on SiriusXM with the SXM app. Just search 
Angels. Johnny, let's talk about Louis Renjifo. He was announced as the American League Player of the Week yesterday. Mm -hmm. So here are his Player of the Week stats, Johnny. He was 11 for 25. That's a 440 average Ooh. with three home runs, seven RBIs, and a 1207 OPS. That's good, by the way. And by the way, Trey Turner was yeah. the NL Player of the Week. Here's his numbers. 11 for 26, 423 average, six home runs, 14 RBIs, nine runs scored. He had a 1695 OPS. Good That's grief. really good, right? And so Renjifo matched him, and he's had he's had a good year, Johnny. In 123 games, he's got a 260 batting average, a 337 on base percentage, a 434 slugging percentage, and a 771 OPS. He's got a 107 OPS plus. Remember, 100 is average, and so 107 is good. Last year, he had a 101 OPS plus. He's got 14 doubles, three triples, 15 home runs, 49 RBIs, six stolen bases, 41 walks, Johnny. He yeah. only had 17 last year, mm -hmm. and he struck out 80 times so far this season. This has been a good year for Renjifo. Johnny, when when did it start to be good? Can you share the like month-to-month -month stats with us? Yeah, here's the thing about his tough start to the season. He didn't heat up until like July. Right. But let's go through the first half. Uh, through March and April, Mike, he had 21 starts out of 29 potential games. He bat 200, a 333 on base, only a 257 slugging. That was good for a 590 OPS. That's not great. May, he only had 15 starts out of 28 potential games. He bat 197, had a 254 on base, a 279 slugging, and a 532 OPS. So that was even worse than Mar March and April. Yeah. Then in June, he had 18 starts out of 27 games where he hit 209, a 280 on base, 358 slugging, and a 638 OPS. Here's where the turnaround began for Luis Renjifo. In July, he had 19 starts when the Angels had 23 games that month. He bat 315, a 398 on base, a 671 slugging percentage. That was good for a 1,069 OPS. Wow. Finally, in August, he only played, he only sat out one game. The Angels had 27 games. He played 26 of them. He had a 327 average, a 391 on base, 520 slugging, and a 911 OPS. Now, keep in mind that if you want to think about uh, the the line, the slash line in terms of elite numbers, 300 average, 400 on base, 500 slugging is like, mm -hmm. woo, that's what mm -hmm. you want. And so yeah. over July and August, Renhifa was hitting those numbers, if not better in the, in that time. Right. So the question really is, Johnny, like, is is this because he needed time and at bats so that he could get better or or does it just take time for him to be who he is? And uh, the evidence is anecdotal. Why don't you share that with us? Yeah, it, it it's it, it depends on how you look at it. If sure. you you can see that he benefited from consistent time in July and August actually starting right like March and June, he played or March through June, he played 54 out of 84 games. That's 64% of the games played. Then in July and August, he played 45 out of 50 games. That's 90% of the games played. And, and here's where it really gets interesting, Mike. And this is kind of what was conducive to his turnaround in July. When Luis Renjifo is batting first in the mm -hmm. batting order, mm -hmm. he had 25 starts, 18 runs, 37 hits, eight doubles, two triples, six home runs, 13 RBIs, eight walks, and 13 strikeouts. And here's his slash line. 356, 412 on base, 644 slugging, and all of that adds up to a 1,057 wow. OPS. Now, Mike, if you're going to make a lineup, where would you typically put a Luis Renjifo in the Angels lineup. Well, at the start of the season, I would have put him at the bottom of the lineup because that's that's where he typically would sit, right? Especially when you have a healthy Trout and a healthy Rendon mm -hmm. and, and all of those. We're not talking about guys, Rendon, right? I, oh, I forgot <laughs> we're not talking about him. Uh, but and 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 that's where Renjifo was, right? He was batting around the eighth spot, and he really struggled according to the numbers, right? Yeah, he had so compared to twenty five starts in the first spot. 
He had 26 starts when he's batting eighth. And listen to these numbers. 11 runs versus 18. 22 hits versus 37. Four doubles versus eight. Four home runs versus six. 12 RBIs versus 13. 10 walks in the eighth spot. That's actually more than he had in the leadoff spot. And 21 Ks, which is almost double what he had out of the leadoff spot. But here's the slash line, Mike. 244 average, 324 on base, 422 slugging, 746 OPS. That line to me is like typical Renjifo, isn't yeah. it? Like when he's yeah. batting eighth and he's hitting like that. Now it's worth considering that when he first started batting leadoff, he had Shohei Otani right behind him. And if you're going to uh, pitch yeah, to somebody, yep. who are you going to pitch to, Renjifo or Otani? And he actually right. started batting first on July 22nd on a more consistent basis until Shawneywell arrived. And right. so that now we see him kind of middle top of the order at that point. Yeah, he's actually, yeah, he's batting, you know, fourth or fifth in the last few games. Now, Johnny, I love this tweet from Retire Salmon 15 on Twitter mm-hmm. uh, who, who said this regarding uh, Louis Renjifo's AL Player of the Week. He said, congrats to Renjifo. I don't understand why half the fan base still hates him. He never misses a game, never gets hurt, always hot at the end of the season. It isn't his fault the Angels are always out of the playoff race. Mm. I hope he keeps this going into next season. So, Johnny... What do we make of Louis Renjifo, who frustrates us at the beginning of the year, but as the summer months come and it gets hot, Louis Renjifo gets hot as well? Yeah, it's, is it a matter of heating up or needing consistent playing time? I think that it's consistency because people are looking at Renjifo and saying, well, he did this last year. He didn't heat up until yeah. the middle of the year. But here's the thing. He didn't come up to the Angels until May 8th of 2022 last year he didn't oh, wow. start he didn't start with his team he was in triple a he he did stink it up in june but didn't everyone stink it up last june <laughs> yes, during the yeah. losing streak yeah mike here's a couple of key things that have changed with Renhifo from last year to this year in 2022 his walk weight walk rate <laughs> yeah. was 3.3 percent this year a 9.4 percent walk wow, that's rate. huge that's, That's a huge. big change. Now, yeah. in terms of contact, and this is key, and they were talking about this on the broadcast that he was working with Marcus Timms on this, he was swinging outside the zone in 2022 40% of the time. Okay. This year, he's swinging outside the zone 32% mm. of the time. So that went down. Uh, he was making contact outside the zone 69% of the time last year. This year, 62% of the time and now more contact in the zone as opposed to making contact outside the zone. If, if you're hitting balls outside the zone, as we saw with Randall Grichuk, it's going to lead to foul balls and pop-ups and ground outs and things right. like that. So right. if Renhifo is zoned in on the strike zone, he's going to get strong contact for hits and slugging and opposite field hits. In fact, you look at his hard hit percentage from last year, 33.6% hard hit percentage this year it's 36.4 so it's up almost four percent opposite field hitting last year he only did it 13 percent of the time and this year he's doing it 16 and a half percent of the time so mike i think going through all of that is when he feels somebody that we should be counting on in 2024 and what do we make of the season that he's had why not Right? Why not? Mm -hmm. I mean, the guy, one thing I just respect the heck out of this guy, because when he does his interviews, I know that English isn't his first language. Mm -hmm. And yet he tries and answers the questions with a whole lot of energy and excitement. He's always got a smile on his face. I I know that he was pulled because he didn't hustle in a game. I I think that that's good accountability. Mm -hmm. I think he's really made a pivot there. The only struggle with Renjifo Johnny is his defense. His ultimate zone rating has improved a bit at second and third uh, last year to this year. But there, there is some uncertainty with him when you put him out there. But I think he's really tried to work on his game. He's got a really strong on, uh, a strong arm. Doing great uh, in the outfield. He had a great right. uh, relay throw last night, and they yeah. were able to get the runner out. Yeah. If he's a guy that can play everywhere, I think that he is a great asset to this team. There is some uncertainty with next year and who's going to play where, I think why not just let Ren Hifo have a spot on the infield or in the outfield, right? Like why not just allow him to be that guy and then you can move him around, right? He's going to be able to start second base and third base and shortstop, but then left field, he even played some center field. I think he's really built up his trade stock. So if the Mm -hmm. angels need to maybe 
perhaps trade him. I think they have the potential to do that because he is young. He is ARB eligible until 2025. He's not a free agent until 2026 when, when he'll be 29 years old. So I think that he's actually a really great piece on this team, Johnny, and somebody that the Angels could rely upon. And maybe maybe the last two seasons as he's gotten hot at the end of the year, maybe that's just the evidence that the Angels needed to say, mm. why don't we stop going and getting all these other guys and why not just give him playing time? Mm -hmm. And I love that that uh, Squid's off this team and I think that yeah. that is just a good like affirmation that, hey, Renhifo, Renhifo's our guy. He can back up Neto. Renhifo's our guy. He can start here. Renhifo's our guy. And I, I, gotta, I gotta say, I've been frustrated with him at times, but I think that he has won me over this season, especially as Angels have been terrible. It looks like he's really trying hard. I really like what retire Sam in 15 on Twitter had to say, like he's there every day. He's healthy. Yeah. He's yeah. playing hard. Uh, you really can't hate on him. We'll take people that can remain healthy, right? Like yeah, let's no get healthy people on this team. And the fact is, is that he's shown improvement from last year to this year. And I think that's the biggest thing uh, at the end of the day. Lockdown Angels is brought to you by FanDuel. You can get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel. They're America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. And plus, I love this, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. That's worth it, friends. I think you should do that. Now's the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use and you can bet on everything from the point spreads to the player props and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and you can kick off the NFL season with an offer that you don't want to miss. FanDuel is an official partner of the NFL. Okay, getting down to our final segment of yeah. the day. Mike, would free agents even want to come to this team next year given how much of a disaster the last two months have been and everybody knows about Artie Marino and the ownership and all kinds of stuff. There's some big un, uh, unrestricted free agents out there, including yep. Otani. There's Kershaw, Hunjin Ryu, Martin Perez, Jock Peterson, Grandal. We've got uh, Josh Hader in terms of closers, Will Smith, uh, just a lot of names out there. And does it make any sense for them to want to be here? I think before we get to that, why don't you talk about some of the signings that Perry Manassian has made since he's taken over this team? Yeah, he's a, kind of attracted some, I guess, quality free agents. I feel like they've gotten them. better each year because they that have, first, I'm looking at the first year. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> no. Yeah, and after the season, you're like, that wasn't great. So no. in 2021, it was Quintana, Suzuki, Ligaris, Claudio, Ciszek, and Watson. All of those were were stinky, stinky. right? Uh, 2022, Syndergaard loop. Rysel was an extension. Uh, Ryan Tapera, Michael Lorenzen, Duffy was also there as well. They were better, right? And we were excited about Syndergaard because of the potential there. And then this year, Anderson, Drury, Moore, and Estevez. And I think, and, and Phillips was included in that too, but I think that those four names, they're, they're quality signings. And I know that we're frustrated with Esty, but... He's had a pretty good year. Moore, I think, was probably one of the best signings. And I think Drury was his best signing. So he he actually, I think, maybe out of the five guys he signed, I think three of them, we could say big wins mm -hmm. from Perry Manassian, right? Definitely. I think Phillips was a big screw up. I mean, I liked Phillips on the team, but I mean, he was here for a month and he's been in AAA ever since. So there obviously wasn't like a long-term plan there. And he kind of was expendable. Yeah. Uh, and to sign him to a major league deal uh, this past off season, I think was kind of the wrong move. So Mike, what's attractive, what's not attractive about coming to the angels in 2024. You got to win me over on this one. Cause I have no idea. Yeah. What's attractive about this team right now? <laughs> this was hard to really think about and put together because there is a lot that you could say is, stinky about this team right yeah. but i think what's attractive is the young talent on the field and Fair. and, and yes. i think that moniac and netto i even think ren hifo involved in that i think that uh nolan shonowell i think logan ohapi like there is a good young core here that could potentially be together for the next five to seven years Not right to mention the arms in the bullpen and in the rotation as well and and that's what you know when you talk about the young pitching staff there are a lot of controllable arms i think out of those controllable arms the two that actually would 
get me excited as a free agent would be Griffin Canning and Chase Silseth. Oh, interesting. And, and last year it would have been Reed Detmers and Patrick Sandoval. But I think that what we've seen from Silseth is that I think he's got ace potential. Now, mm. I, I, I think he still has to prove himself, but I think he's still got ace potential. Griffin Canning reminds me a lot of Kevin Apier when he came over. Mm. And Kevin Apier wasn't fantastic. He did have a couple of really good years with the Royals. He came over from the Mets in 2001, 2002. But I think what Griffin Canning has comparable to Kevin Apier is that he can eat innings and he doesn't go out there and just fall apart completely. Uh, maybe another example would be like Aaron Seeley when he was on this team. He, yeah. he came in and he really ate up innings for yeah. this team. And I, so I think Griffin Canning can be somebody that could do that. And I think he's attractive. Johnny, I think also uh, to pat ourselves on the back, I think the angels have a great fan base. Obviously the fans are still there frustrated, but they're still there. They're still <laughs> showing up for games, right? They're still cheering on this team. Our buddy locked on every day or Landon uh, was there on uh, Monday night, sang the national anthem. Like we, there's some good people that cheer for this team and love this team. Uh, I think the location, Southern California, man, yeah. awesome right i think the stadium has a is a great spot it's kind of a, a beautiful stadium to play in and i really think that what would draw a, a free agent is a chance to actually make an impact hmm. with this team they've been out of the playoffs for so long you could come in and suddenly be the hero hmm. you could come in and they would build a statue to you because <laughs> if this team actually wins and and you were somebody that added to that you were somebody that helped bring that I think that that's attractive to any free agents that come and want to sign here. Just like what happened with Texas a couple of years ago with, with Simeon and Seeger, like why'd they sign there? Well, this year is an example of why right. they're having phenomenal years and they're impacting that team in a really major way. Yeah. Texas had a plan and they signed those expensive deals knowing that they had some good arms coming up and some good players coming up. And I know they're really going through it right now, but I mean, to, to get off to the start that they've had and, Obviously, they're still in in the playoff picture. I know they're not first place, but yeah. it just goes to show that they had a plan of, hey, let's bring in piece by piece, and eventually we'll get there. And then you see Seeger and Simeon playing with guys like Adolis Garcia and Ezekiel Duran, and they bring in the arms they need this season. And look at the way the rotation has changed. I think that the Angels could follow that same kind of trajectory if they don't go and blow it on one big free agent and think, right. all right, we're done. You know, right. I also think Mike, that Mike Trout being here is, is sure. a draw. And I know that Agreed. he hasn't been on the field. I think this year he mentioned the other day in an article that he's felt better than he's ever felt. He just, he said, I couldn't help my, my dumb hand getting yeah. hurt. Like it was just, that's just what happened. And so now that he doesn't have a, a hamate bone anymore, then we don't have to worry about it. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. John, when you talk about this team maybe not being attractive, I think that the questions would be who will manage? What about the analytics? Like, what mm. are the analytics department? We heard Justin Verlander talk about the difference between the Astros and the Mets. Mm -hmm. I wonder what the conversation would be about between the A, the Angels, and maybe somebody else, right? And I think the lack of success for the last 10 years, that actually can be something that would keep guys away from this team because there are a lot of question marks about this team and what they're going to do next. Yeah. And it's it, in terms of the free agents who are out there, look, there's not a lot of great bats next right. season. And right. so it is important for us to have a good young core of players like Neto and Shawnee well, and, and Ohapi and Moniac and even Joe Adele, Joe Adele started a Twitter account last night and said, I'm, I'm back soon guys. And Heck so yeah. that's exciting. We'll see what happens with him and, and Renifo as well. So, there's a lot to be excited about, especially when it comes to the young players. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. Remember, the Angels play the O's at 6.38 Pacific time, and you can catch every pitch of the Angels' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Angels. Hey, give us a follow at Locked On Angels on Twitter and at Super Halo Rose on Twitter and Instagram. Mike, what do we have on deck for tomorrow's show? Johnny, is Zach Neto the Adley Rutschman of the Angels? Ooh. We'll talk about what that means tomorrow on Locked on Angels. Looking forward to that conversation. Until then, my name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Love it. All right, friends, you take care. We'll see you right back here tomorrow for more Locked on Angels. Angel fans, pay attention to the 66ers. They hold a one-game lead over the Lake Elsinore Storm. Could potentially get to the playoffs. They're good.